Okie dokie. Well, good morning, everybody, and time once again for my pseudo cast. And before I continue on, I'm gonna I'm gonna crack open a can of V8 Energy Orange Pineapple flavor. So, get ready for some pops. Okay, and the music. The music is gonna be um. Uh, Again, I just uh, went on YouTube. I clicked the, um, I clicked the dark ambient tab, and this is like the first thing that came up. So this is uh, Warris, Majestic Kingdom of the Night, 2018, Space Dungeon Synth. Um, I gave this out. I gave this one a quick listen. So it, it seems okay. Um, there's no singing in it. it. It's like all instrumental. Probably have to sound test this though. Okay. So otherwise, um, I had a fairly bit had a fairly busy night last night after the stream and and today as well. Um, I did a. I, I discovered a new game, or I started playing a new game. It's called Dorf Romantic. It's, uh, as you can kind of see here. And as you can kind of see here, the goal, there, there's kind of a Tetris aspect to it. I mean, as you can tell, it's all hexes. And you have to, you know, you have to connect, uh, you have to connect rails together. You have to connect forests together. You know, you have to connect golden fields together, etc. And then, um, and you, uh, you start with, and I, I'm really hoping you guys can see my pointer, but, but you can, um, you start with, uh, you start with 50 hexes. And, um, as you can see here, like 9 plus, 7 plus, you're given these quests, as they're called. You know, you have to, you gotta connect at least, at least nine rivers, and then you'll quest to be completed. Like here, you have to complete, you have to connect at least seven railways. Even though, even though I'm thinking this might be a game bug because technically, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, five, six, seven. You got a, you already have more than seven in here, so I don't know, I don't know why I didn't get credit for this one. But you kind of get the idea, though. There's some that you have to connect at least nine, and then there's other quests where you have to you have to connect an exact amount. And uh, if you go over that amount, then the quest is a failure. So, and on top of that, uh, I don't. I'm thinking this is random, but whenever you whenever you connect a tile, uh, you lose one. Like these empty spaces here. These here, um, whenever you connect, again, whenever you lay down a tile, it's almost like, uh, you lose one. So. Okay, it doesn't look to be that loud. So. But, uh, overall, I like this game. Um, and yeah, the, uh, objective is you do want to get achievements, and you also want to try to get as high a score as possible. One of the achievements in this game is if, uh, if you if you play X amount of times with a score of at least 5,000, then you get an achievement for that. There's also another achievement where if you can get a score of at least 10,000, then that's an achievement too. So. Oh, and I forgot to mention too, with these quests, whenever you complete one, you'll also be given like around five or so extra extra hexes to use so that's that's how you keep that's how you keep the game going you don't just you don't just blindly connect the connect the sceneries together there's more to it than that like I said you kind of have to be strategic about this so but again overall I like this game um probably not enough to stream it 
But uh, I did, however, I did make a, I did make a gameplay video of me doing a run of this, and then uploading it to YouTube. Um, I think I still have yet to do it on Twitch, but chances are I might not. So, it, yeah, because I mean, if it's um, it's a fairly large video, it's at least a gigabyte. So that means you're look, you're probably looking at at least 15 minutes just to upload it. So, so you're probably talking, you're probably talking about a half an hour for a short video. So, so as far as uploading videos, at least with me, size matters. So, but, but yeah, like I said, I like the game. Uh, not enough to stream it, but. You know, enough to play it and probably upload a video or something. So, uh, but otherwise, oh, and uh, what during my stream last night, I played a, I played it uh, I played an album. This is David Bowie's final album, um, called Black Star. Um, I just remembered. Uh, I recalled from some of the uh, Amoeba Records videos that I've watched. Um, a lot of artists on there picked this album. It's like hauntingly beautiful. It's such a great, wonderful album. It's a beautiful album by David Bowie, you know, etc., etc., etc. So I listened to it once or twice, but kind of, I kind of like, kind of like the Adams Family pinball table, the most popular table of all time. It go, the popularity goes over my head. I mean, I didn't, you know, the table didn't impress me much. Kind of the same thing here with David with uh, this Black Star album. It didn't really do anything for me. I mean, so, but um, one thing I one thing I found to be a huge turnoff about the album though was all the damn sat was the uh, annoying saxophone. And it just, just it was just all over the place, and you just. It was just solo mode. Um, at least, at least that's the impression I got from my first listen. Like I said, I was playing this during my stream, so I couldn't really actually listen to it. But it was one thing that caught my ear. It's just that annoying, the annoying sax solos that I kept hearing throughout the album. It just it it got to where I just cried, Uncle, and stopped playing it. And on top, you know, but it's all. It's also kind of like, um, it's kind of like Public Enemies. It takes a nation of millions to hold us back. It's like an all-time rap classic. I can't stand that album, cause it's got, it the whole, the album the album could have been awesome if it wasn't marred by the damn, the damn high-pitched squealing that's on there. Just wow, let's see, wow, 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 wow. He's like. Terminator X. I mean, it just got freaking annoying. So it, it just it really killed the album for me. Black Star here was kind of the same thing. It just the that annoying saxophone killed it. But what I did do though is after my stream was over, I went ahead and uh, gave this album a second listen, and I also um. I also read up a little bit on the history of this album, so doing that, I actually do, I still still not a fan of the album, but I do have more respect for it now. Um, this is this album that I found out, really well, it truly was his swan song album. Um, for one, I believe he recorded this album in secret. I. I don't know the specifics of how you pull that off. Like, the session musicians you bring in, you, may, you like, you swear and sign them to secrecy. I did. It's the only thing I could think of. You, you basically, you know, you, you basically tell them that they have to keep the session secret. Don't let anybody know. Don't let this, you know, be released to the or don't let anybody in public know about this. So that was one. So you know, unlike you know most other you know most other records, 
you know, there's there's all this hoopla and fanfare. Billy Bob Jones is currently you know, is currently recording his latest album and set to be out next year. You know that kind of thing. You know there's they go public with just even even the process of making an album is made public, not this record. Like I said, they did this whole album in secret. And um, I think it was uh, it was released like normal, I think. Um, you know, just the normal release and all that stuff. Uh, but um, another thing about this record is, two days after this album went live, he died. He died of cancer. Um, he told nobody about this, that he was uh, that he was dying of cancer. So he never made this public. He made this album. So he died of, you know, and then he died two days after this. So this was his swan song record. Um, and I actually posted this in my blog, but I was actually wrong about it. Um, the one article that I was reading about this album, it said he played saxophone. I thought that's what he said. So I, I'm thinking, you know, oh, okay. You know, this saxophone's annoying as hell come to my own. And I, at that time, I found out later that it was David Bowie playing the sax. Ah, okay. So I get it now. I get it. You know, he's just, you know, he's, he's going to be dead soon. So he's, he's got to sit there and hit all the notes. You know, he's got to be as obnoxious as possible with that saxophone. He's about to die. So he's, he's got to get the notes out. He's got to get the music out before he goes. Okay. You know, so that I under okay, that was more understandable. Still not a fan of the saxophone, but or still not a fan of the sax on the album, but at least now it was understandable. Come to find out later that no, he didn't play the sax on anything any part of the album. He just had some other session saxophone player making all this noise, so so that kinda got that kinda got annoying, so you know, and on batting on one end, I'm thinking, wah, wah, wah. So, but it would have, it would have been, it would have been, it would have been cool if, if it was David Bowie, you know, playing the sax, you know, playing the saxophone. But I'm guessing during the recording session, he probably just told the sax player, eh, play something. And then just, he started playing wacky shit at random. But I guess um, I overall I'm not a huge fan of David Bowie. I'm kind of indifferent to him. One of the reasons why is a lot of his music gets played on the radio ad nauseum, and I'm sick of hearing 90% of the music that gets played. So, but in case anyone was to ask, um, what my what my favorite David Bowie album is? <laughs> it's gotta be it's gotta be this one. It's got to be a self-titled debut. His very first album, because because he sounds nothing. Hey, let me turn this down. But yeah, he he sounds nothing like what he would sound like from his second album onwards all the way up to his current one. But I, I, I swear to God, if this has to be the album where he wasn't doing any drugs. Like, he was completely sober. And it, it's like, it's almost like, because the album that he made after this one was another classic, Space Oddity. You know, the ground control to Major Tom. You know, that one. You know. Oh. What was that? Ground control to Major Tom, your circuit's dead. There's something, you know, can you hear me, Major Tom? You know that one? Uh, the album he made after that, after this one, Space Oddity, I believe has that song on it. Like I said, Space Oddity is like an all-time classic. So I can't help but think that he had to have done this record sober. It's like the, 
It's like the record label guys, you know, they, they checked out the finished product and they're like, oh my god, this, this is some boring stuff. Hey, can we like, can we like do something to help this guy's career along? Well, I got some, well, I got some cocaine in my desk drawer here. Well, okay, let's just give him some of that. And then they got him hooked on cocaine and Space Oddity and Ziggy Stardust and all that, so probably patting themselves on the back after this. Ha ha ha, good call, man. Good call on the cocaine, dude. You know, that kind of thing. So. Um, but, uh, since we're kind of on the subject of swan song, of swan songs, um, I would probably have to say my favorite final album has got to be this one. Pink Floyd's Endless River album. I mean, because because kind of like the flip side of David Bowie's debut album this album here was like a what this is like Pink Floyd as you've never heard them before in this album here it was all it's all new age ambience music I mean I've said this before back when I was up uh, when I mostly when I was streaming Final Fantasy 14 and I was consistently playing vinyl records this was one that I would play every so often. But yeah, this is this is their new age ambience music. Like a total departure from from the kind of music they used to, they usually played. So and I I thought they they made the right choice doing this. Cause um how can I put this? Because Blackstar is my uh, I believe was was the unofficial vital album from David Bowie. I mean, he knew himself that he was going to die after this album, but, you know, the general public did it. So, it, again, again, it was a, it's an unofficial swan song album. This record, though, again, on the flip side, this record, I believe, was Pink Floyd's official final album. This was the last one that they were going to make. And, um, oh, I was about to say, yeah, the album should have been over yet. Anyway, so instead of just sitting here doing what which I thought would have been a real would have been a real shitty way to go out, instead of just making another album, you know, instead of making their final album sound like all their others, they wanted to make this one memorable, and they went a totally different route. And um, I should also mention too, throughout this album, um, it it, it was a retrospective, um, because they were playing um. Uh, I can't remember the exact songs that they were playing, but they were, uh, they were playing, you know, just, you know, new age ambient versions of some of their all-time classics, probably, uh, like Dark Side of the Moon and stuff like that. Like I said, I haven't, I haven't listened to the record in a long time, but I do remember, I do remember some of the parts of that album sounding real familiar. Like I said, they're just, it's just new age ambient versions of some of their old classics. So it. So it it was it's an album that looks back without it without them just turning it into a fucking greatest hits album, which is for the most part the bane of my damn existence. I I mean if if I had a you know if I said my turntable was open, you know, play whatever you want, that would probably be one of my biggest stipulations right there. No greatest hits, none of that best up shit. I mean, especially the mainstream stuff. You know, like... Like, Bad Company, Greatest Hits. Guy, come on, man. Surely you can do better than that. You know, give me a damn break. You know, but... You know, so if you were gonna... You know, so if I was gonna allow somebody to play some stuff on my turntable, that would probably be, be, probably be my one stipulation. Please play... An actual album, you know, not a, not a retrospective or anything like that. You know, not a compilation album, like an actual album. You know, don't play me the Eagles' greatest hits. You know, and you know, it, it, you know, not a fan of it. You know, I'd rather you play Hotel California. I'd rather you play that album than the freaking greatest hits. You know, so, but. Getting back, getting back to this, 
this is um this is probably my favorite swan favorite swan song album right here because again they went in a totally different route you know than than what everybody else did and um I don't know how they worked it out afterwards but um there were because there yeah there was an act there was an actual death at some point I maybe during the making of the album or after the album was made but the keyboard player Richard Wright he died I but again I don't know if he died during the making of the album or afterwards but he did die at some period of time around this album so there's that there's actually kind of a black star aspect to this album as well so but like I said I don't really know the whole the whole complete history of this record I just I do know that I do know that after hearing this after hearing this album I, I liked it immediately um and I guess I will go ahead and say that this is my favorite pink or it's not my favorite Pink Floyd album but I think it's second it's second only to obscured my obscured by clouds that's my favorite Pink Floyd album Oh, and uh, for those that don't know, or in case anyone hasn't noticed, I'm trying something totally different here. I did a, I did a little bit of it yesterday. I'm just, uh, I'm experimenting with this. Uh, but I don't, I don't see me doing this very much. Cause uh, for one, this is extremely tedious to do. Cause um, cause right now I have about one, two, see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I have about I have about eight windows open. I got a, at least eight windows right now, just to be able to, just to be able to. Just to be able to show you these, I have to have eight windows open in order for that to be possible because I have to use my paint program in order to show those images because uh, my OBS program here, it doesn't recognize uh, the like Microsoft Photo or Microsoft Photos. It doesn't recognize it. I get a black screen, so I had to do it this way. Uh, but based... So I'm yeah, just I'm kind of giving you a little bit of a behind the scenes and how I did this. But yeah, I had a I had to download the images off of Google, and then I had to save them. Or I had at first I had to create a new subfolder inside my pictures, my pictures folder, like where all my screenshots go. I had to create a subfolder for that for my for my pseudo cast stuff. Save them onto it open all of them with my paint program so like i said i have i have eight windows right now i have eight windows going just just to be able to show you these yeah so like i said i have eight windows just to show you those um not to mention it's just the whole ordeal of downloading them and getting everything set up and all that—it's very tedious. So, so as kind of part and parcel to that, I do—I mean, I do know how to edit videos. I, I mean, you know, I do know how to edit them. I mean, really, all you need is just this OBS program and then a paint program. Uh, paint program. Um, yeah, you need OBS. Microsoft Paint and um Microsoft Movie Maker. Both of these programs I are both of these programs came with my computer. There's probably better software out there for it, but you're probably gonna have to pay a pretty penny for it. Whereas um, um as you can see here I'm very ghetto about it. But like I like I said, I I basically already know how to make and edit videos. 
It's just such a pain in the ass to do, though. And uh, on top of that, it also kills a lot of the improvisation involved in me making these casts. Because after going through all this trouble, of uh, making these uh, images, I'm basically forced to say things a certain way now. I gotta say things in a certain order. I I have to talk about, you know, I have to talk about the David Bowie uh, debut album now. Now that I went through the trouble of downloading it and setting it up, I now have to talk about it. Endless River, I now have to talk about the record. You kinda get the idea though, but doing it this way, kills a lot of the improvisation involved in doing these so I'm getting but uh, I just wanted to do this just to see if I could pull it off so but like I said I don't I don't see me doing this very often so because like because again like I said this is there's a lot of hoops you have to jump through just to pull that off and all I, and all I'm doing is just uh all I'm doing is just showing off uh, four images so you can only imagine what the the average videos that you see on YouTube. I mean, I think I believe uh, Emperor Lemon. Yeah, he's to me he's a legendary YouTuber, and probably one of the best at uh, making making these kind of videos. I think he could only he only does like one a one a month, one per month, because I guess it takes him that long to make one, and that. That is hardly surprising if you ever see what his videos look like. Um, Ordinary Things. That's another YouTube channel I'm, I'm off and on that I've uh, subscribed to. Same thing. I think he only makes maybe... He makes one like once a month. Probably because that, it, that's about the amount of time that it takes him to make one. It takes him about a month. I mean, making, I mean, making and editing videos is like super tedious work. So... So yeah, again, this is this is probably something that I'm I'm probably not gonna do very often. So Oh, and um just a quickie thing here before I go. Um there was a huge Dragon Ball Fighters update. Um I went ahead and downloaded it. I tried playing it again. But uh, I got I got a small way into the training mode, but I'm like, I can't do it. It, it just I'm, I'm I think I I think I played Nappa. I think I played Nappa in training mode. I uh, just played him for like five minutes or so. Or Nappa is um one of my mains back when I was playing this game consistently. But, uh, but it just, I got about five minutes in, I'm like, I can't do it. I mean, I don't, I don't hate, I mean, I definitely don't hate the game. But I think I kind of, I think I said this in yesterday's cast too. Uh, going back and streaming one of these other games that I used to stream, it just feels like a reversion. See, I, I mean, I pro I mean, I probably could if I had to. But I, I wouldn't enjoy it very much. I mean, it's... In the words of Miles Davis, I ain't there anymore. You know, again, I don't... I certainly don't hate the game. I don't hate fighting games, but I'm... I, I just... I'm just not feeling the fighting games anymore. You know, just like the moon, I have my phases. And right now, I'm in my... Uh, I'm in my city building phase. I'm still... Uh, I still want to stop... I still want to stop playing City Skylines. I mean, because I love the game itself. It's just one of the things that really kills it. And I did put this on my blog post. Um, way too much DLC. I mean, you, you can you can play a vanilla version. Here, I'll just just to get something going. I'll just play the one here in the upper left corner. Uh, Grow the Goblin, Return to the Dungeon. But like, like I, uh, like I, like I said, it just way too much DLC on that game. 
like um older sim cities things that um things that were already part of the game in fact in fact now that i think about it since uh since i got like four different paint programs up if i can find it Like I'm a digging. Okay, I guess I don't have it on here. There it is. There it is. This is off of one of Emperor Lemon's videos, and I frickin' he frickin' nailed it as far as city skylines go. This is my other issue. It's like all these things that you. It's like all these things that uh, you take for granted, like the old SimCity games, are now uh, are now DLCs. Like this, uh, like uh, vanilla vanilla City Skylines. Um, compared to the enormous amount of DLC that that you can get, it, it ain't shit. Like it, it's just like it shows here. These DLCs, these are just uh, part of the part of the base game in the old Sim Cities. And the uh, extra expansions that were on them, that came with them, or that you could get, were 100% optional. Not anymore. So, but yeah, I just wanted to, I just wanted to show that. But like I said, um, I can't really think of another game that I want to play right now. Other than that, other than City Skylines, but that that's one issue I got. Uh, second issue. Um, it takes a, it takes a really long time for the game to fire up, and then even worse. And I I thought about this too uh, yesterday. It takes longer for the game to shut down than it does my whole computer. My computer shuts down a lot faster than the fr than, than this one single game does. I mean, to me that's pretty damn bad. So, but nevertheless, uh, I'm playing it now because I can't think of anything else. And the um and the aforementioned game again, uh, Dorf Romantic. I I like the game, but I don't like it enough to consistently stream though. So um but otherwise, uh, since I kind of went a little bit over long here, about thirty three minutes in, <laughs> but. Um, I'll just, uh, but I've said all the things I wanted to say, so I'll just go ahead and cut it off here, um, because, especially now, because I kind of need to get to uploading and processing and all that other good stuff, so I'll just go ahead and kill it here. Um, thanks for tuning in and listening to me, everybody. I appreciate that. Always have. And, um, I should be able to do another one of these tomorrow morning, so, but until then, though. Thanks again for dropping by, everybody, and see you all next time. Bye for now.